In Wi-Fi configurations, the 40 MHz channel width in 2.4 GHz radio and 160 MHz channel width in 5 GHz radio are very confusing. Many people don't know whether to use them, others question why they even exist. I will have two videos about them. This particular video is only about 40 MHz channel width in 2.4 GHz radio. This is my lab environment. I'm going to use this setup for multiple coming videos about Unify access points. I use a Unify Enterprise 8 port PoE switch. It's perfect for this type of setup. It's not rack mount, so I can move it around. It has enough PoE parts, so I can power all the access points in my lab. And the parts are PoE plus part instead of just PoE, like in other smaller Unify PoE switches. So it can be used to power the most power hungry access points, such as U6 Enterprise and U6 Pro. All the eight PoE parts support 2.5 GBE, so I can connect it with the U6 Enterprise access point. It also has two 10 gigabits parts, so I can connect to a Linux for throughput testing. In the lab environment, I have five different access points. Nowadays, there are four commonly used Wi-Fi standards, Wi-Fi 4, 5, 6, and 6E. I use four different Mac machines to test them. In some situation, I need to capture the Wi-Fi frames to better understand how things work. So I will use another Mac to capture packets and to view them in Wireshark. I also have a PC here. In some special situation, the data rates are not supported by modern Macs, such as 40 MHz channel width in 2.4 GHz radio. Of course, in this particular video, not all the devices are required, but I'm going to use the same lab environment for future related videos as well. To understand the 40 MHz channel width in 2.4 GHz radio, let's start with this empty 2.4 GHz band. This is just a portion of the radio spectrum from 2.4 GHz to 2.5, which is used in the Wi-Fi 2.4 GHz radio. A Wi-Fi channel is nothing but the frequency at which your access point communicates with your devices. When we say a channel width is 20 MHz, we simply mean its channel is 20 MHz wide. In this diagram, each block represents a channel. As you can see, it's 20 MHz wide. In this Wikipedia article about WLAN channels under the 2.4 GHz section, you can find the allowed channels for different countries. In North America, only channel 1 to channel 11 are allowed. Channel 12 to channel 14 are either to be avoided or not allowed, which means the only available frequency range in North America for 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi is from 2401, as listed here, to 2473, or 24. 83 if you count these two channels as well. Go back to our diagrams. Now let's play a game. As you just saw from the Wikipedia article, there are totally 11 such channels or 11 such blocks we need to place evenly into this available frequencies. How we can do that? It's no brainer, right? This is the only way we can do. So basically we evenly put the 11 channels from this frequency to this frequency. That's it. There's no way we can place the 11 blocks evenly and without any overlaps. This is what we end up with. The 11 channels are packed in the limited range and they overlap with each other. You may know overlapping of frequencies means potential interference and bad Wi-Fi signals. 
However, among the crowded 11 channels, there are three of them, channel 1, channel 6, and channel 11. They do not overlap with each other. That's why if you read those Wi-Fi optimization articles, they always mention these three magical numbers for 2.4 gigahertz radio. If you have multiple access points, you may want to start with these three channels so that you don't have interference within your own setup. Of course, this approach won't avoid interference with your neighbors, but at least you can optimize what you can control. We all know for 2.4 GHz, it has much worse interference if you compare it with 5 GHz or 6 GHz. Most people or devices still stick with 20 MHz channel width. To increase the speed, one way is to double the channel width from 20 MHz to 40 MHz. This is the MCS index table. From this table, you can find out the theoretical data rate or speed for your Wi-Fi connection. You can see 40 MHz width can make the speed more than doubled. In this video, we will go back to this table to look up the data rate, but I won't spend time to explain the details about all the parameters. If you are interested, check a dedicated video in my channel. Let's go back to our diagrams. Let's play the game again, but this time with 40 MHz channel width. As you can see on the screen, I have two blocks. Each one has 40 MHz width. Right? No matter how hard I try, within the allowed frequency range in North America, I cannot place two channels without overlapping. It's simply impossible. That's why people always say, forget about 40 MHz channel width for 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. It's not worth it. It won't work. What they say is right in most scenarios, but in some very rare situations, for example, if you only has one access point, Point, and you do not have interference from your neighbors, you may be able to take advantage of it. In this video, I will not argue about how useless the 40 MHz channel width is. I'm only going to discuss if, for whatever reasons, you want to try it, what you can expect. Let's first see what the speed will look like when 40 MHz channel width works. Then, to answer a natural question, if you set your AP to use 40 MHz channel width, what if your Wi-Fi clients, your devices, don't support it? If they are still able to connect without issues, let's investigate where the magic is, how in the world the device can still connect. For all the U6 access points, including the cheapest U6 Lite, 40 MHz channel width is supported in 2.4 GHz radio. So in this video, I will only use U6 Pro as the example AP. Let me use two Wi-Fi clients. One is Mac Mini M2, which support the Wi-Fi 6E standard. The other one is a PC. It only supports Wi-Fi 5. And I still need this Mac to capture Wi-Fi frames for analysis. In Unify Network Controller, go to Settings for Wi-Fi. Check the SSID ZU6 Pro 2.4G. You can see it's only broadcasting using the U6 Pro, just one AP, and it's only broadcasting in 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi band. Then go to Devices, click on the U6 Pro, go to Settings. For 2.4 GHz radio, as you can see, I select 40 MHz channel width. Then let's go to Client Machines. Let's start with the Mac. In the Mac, click on Wi-Fi. Now it's connected to another AP. Let me make sure it use the U6 Pro 2.4G SSID. Okay, it's connected. Then let me show the Wi-Fi details. As you can see, the physical rate is only 229 megabps, and the physical mode is .11ax, which means Wi-Fi 6. The other two important things which impact speed, MCS index and NSS. 
we have got the important Wi-Fi connection parameters. Let's check the MCS index. By the way, from the Mac machine, you can see the channel is 3, but it's 20 megahertz, not 40. The index is 9, and it's Wi-Fi 6. NSS means number of spatial streams, which is 2. Basically, we end up with this row for 20 hertz, the 0.8 MUS GI, the rate is exactly 229, which is shown here in the Mac machine. This is how Mac connect to the AP. It's the .11ax standard, which is Wi-Fi 6. It's using 20 MHz width instead of 40, and the GI is 0.8 MUS. That's what we conclude from the MCS index. Now let's try the PC. Connect to the same SSID. Let me do it here. Make sure we select the U6 Pro 2.4G. Connect. Okay, connected. This is the property. Let's find out what's the physical rate. Speed is 400 mega BPS. Much faster than the Mac. Even though this PC only supports Wi-Fi 5. Then let's check the MCS index accordingly. Under the prior 11AX columns, the only 400 physical rate one is this one. So let's validate whether this one is what the PC uses. 40 MHz. MCS index is 9, GI is 0.4 mu s. As you can see, even with a low end PC, which doesn't support the latest Wi Fi standard, if we can make 40 megahertz channel width work, at least theoretically, we can get much faster speed. Let's test whether it really has better speed or the number difference is just some type of illusion. Let's first get the IP address of the Linux machine, .1.217. Then in this terminal, let me run the iperf 3 server, listening to port 5201. In the second terminal, run iperf 3 server as well, but listening to another port number. Okay, both are running. Then in the PC, let's start the iperf 3 client. I'm running the client against the Linux machine's IP address in the receiving direction, which means download, and then run it for a long time using 10 parallel threads. Okay, so you can see the average speed is about 160 mega bps okay let me kill it then in the mac machine let me run similar command but this time against the other iperf3 server which is listening to part 5202 yeah see i can only get maximumly about 80 mega bps only half the speed if you compare to the pc that's the advantage if you are able to use the 40 megahertz in 2.4 gigahertz radio after seeing this connection information and the speed testing you may already have tons of questions for example what on earth just happened why the latest Mac has worse speed. Let's dig deeper by checking the captured Wi-Fi frames. I show you three Wireshark windows. The top right Wireshark is to check the beacon frame so that we can see what's the information broadcasted by the AP. And then we will use the lower two Wireshark windows to check the different behaviors between the PC and the Mac to understand why Mac connect with 20 megahertz and the PC connect with 40 megahertz. Okay, let's start with the AP side. So as you can see, I already filtered on the AP's Mac address. The AP is broadcasting to let the whole world know what it can do, what it cannot do. So I click the random one, expand the IEEE 802.11 wireless management, expand the tagged 
parameter. Let's check the HT capabilities. Expand the capability infer. See the second line, support channel width 20 and 40. So which means the AP announce that, okay, if you want to connect with me using 40 megahertz, simply ask because it is supported. It's not surprising at all because we set the AP to use the 40 megahertz channel width, right? But you can also see 20 megahertz is also possible to be used, even though we didn't set so in network controller, right? It's supported by default. Okay, let's check the HE capabilities. Under the HE physical capability information, then expand the channel width set. You can see 40 megahertz in 2.4 gigahertz band is supported. So basically, it doesn't matter whether you connect with the old Wi-Fi standard or the new one. The announcement is the same. 40 megahertz channel width is supported. So we are good with Wireshark part for the beacon frames. Now let's SSH into the AP to validate the backend setting there to confirm in the AP backend, the setting is also 40 megahertz enabled. Let me SSH to the U6 Pro access point. Make sure you read the notice and take your own risk if you decide to proceed. Let me run the command IW. It is standard Linux command. It's not specific to Unify. And let me check the Wi-Fi related device information. There are a lot of devices, but close to the end. See for this particular interface, ATH0, it's associated with this SSID. That's the one we are interested in, right? And see the channel 3, yes, that's what we set for width is 40 megahertz. This reflects what we set in Unify Network Controller. And you can also run another command to get some very detailed settings in your interface. For my case, I already got the interface name which is ATH0, and then I want to get the current mode. So that's the detailed mode for the current channel width. Okay, so far we checked the captured Wi-Fi frames from the AP and the access points backend status. They both confirm that our AP does support 40 megahertz channel width in 2.4 gigahertz radio. However, why we have different behaviors in the two Wi-Fi clients? Let's check the Mac Mini first in the lower right window. I already filtered on the Mac Mini's Mac address. If you are familiar with the Wi-Fi frame capturing, you can see there are just normal authentication, association, and the four-way handshake message. Nothing special. So let me click on, let's say, association request, which is sent from the Apple machine to the Unify access point. Go to the very last part, the wireless management. And for tagged parameters, go to HT capabilities. Expand the HT capability here. See this one, HT 40 megahertz intolerant. This is the so-called 40 intolerant flag. This flag says for our Mac, the use of 40 megahertz is disallowed. This means the Mac tells the AP, even though you do support 40 megahertz channel width, I don't support it. I don't want to use it. That's what this flag means. Then similarly, let's go to the left side Wireshark. Let's check the PC frames. Let me select the association request frame, wireless management tag, tagged parameters, HT capability, expand the HT capability info. And see for the flag here, it says use of 40 transmission is allowed. So the value is zero instead of one, right? That's why the PC does support 
the 40 megahertz channel width. I don't have the latest version of MacBook Pro, which use Intel CPU. So I don't know whether those Macs support 40 megahertz channel width or not, but at least for all of my Apple Silicon Macs, no matter whether it's M1 or M2, Pro or not, they all do not support 40 megahertz in 2.4 gigahertz radio. Just to summarize, what we have concluded is your Unified AP can support both 20 MHz and 40 MHz even when you set its channel width to 40 MHz. No matter your device supports 40 MHz or not, it can always connect to the Unified AP with the channel width it supports. Okay, before we end this video, let's discuss another situation. Sometimes it happened to me that even though in Unified Network Controller, I still set it to 40 MHz. But as you can see from the SSH, the IW command returned the device status as 20 MHz. And in the left side, you can see similar information. So my theory is the AP detects the interference from other SSID on the adjacent channels. So set it back to 20 megahertz even though in the configuration i want it to be 40 megahertz so just to avoid interference the ap automatically did that sometime so in this video both the wi-fi client and the unified ap are smart enough to adjust themselves to connect to each other even if you force the 40 megahertz channel width in Unify Network Controller. Okay, this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching.